Hello, here's some perspective on the debate raging around how much money investors should put in so-called emerging markets. Emerging markets have been at the centre of the stock market falls we've seen so far in 2014. After a really disappointing time in 2013, some investors are wondering if they're worth the bother. The thing with emerging markets is you really need to take a long-term view to make investing in them work. Investing in Asia, Latin America, Africa and Eastern Europe was never going to be easy and was always meant to be a decades-long game. The argument in favour was to get in early to the development of countries as diverse as Brazil, Russia, India and China and a host of other smaller countries. But of course, emerging markets are renowned for their political and economic turbulence. They have a history of crises and upsets, at least eight in the 20 years leading up to the current malaise. This makes emerging markets high risk. They plunge, but then they bounce back. If you can stomach the ups and downs, the returns on your money can be good. For example, over 10 years, emerging markets have beaten the developed markets of the US, UK, Europe and Japan by a mile. But over the last three years, their performance has been poor. Emerging markets have failed to participate in their post-financial crisis rally in the way developed markets did. That's annoying if you've a lot invested in emerging markets. But bear in mind it's the relative performance of emerging markets that's bad. In absolute terms, investors in global emerging market funds have lost around 12%. That's not good by any means, but it's not disastrous either. The problem of countries in the emerging markets is they lack the internal savings with which to fund their development. This makes them reliant on overseas investment. And the trouble with this is the hot money syndrome, which means that when times are good, capital flows in from Western investors, but when times are bad, it rushes out again. Right now, things are bad. The decision of the US Federal Reserve to reduce the amount of money it prints and pumps into the global economy is like turning off a gigantic tap as far as emerging markets are concerned. Western capital is also worried about the slowdown in China and the impact it will have on emerging markets trading with the world's second largest economy. As the hot money retreats, it creates a vicious circle for emerging markets. Their currencies fall as Western investors disengage. This makes imports more expensive for their citizens to buy, which pushes up inflation, which in turn makes emerging markets even more unattractive to overseas investors. One response is for countries to raise interest rates to fight inflation, but this threatens to slow down their economies. It's a tough bind. The solution espoused by Western capital is emerging markets should implement reforms to make their economies even more market friendly and boost exports so as to improve their balance sheets. But with elections happening in Brazil, Indonesia, India, South Africa and Turkey this year, those moves might not happen soon. Nevertheless, the tide might turn again in favour of emerging markets quicker than you might think. Emerging markets are in stronger financial shape than in previous crises and owe less money to foreign lenders than at any time since the 70s. Having fallen for three years, emerging markets now look good value compared to developed markets. The most important thing with investing in emerging markets is to take a balanced approach. This chart gives a useful guide to how much professional investors put in emerging markets. It shows that even if you're a keen internationalist, and not everybody is, just over a third of your money stays in the UK, while Asia might account for 10% of your investments, with other emerging markets taking just 3%. It's just a guide, but what it means is that while you shouldn't write off emerging markets altogether, you shouldn't go overboard on them either.